Welcome back to another episode of the Contrary Beekeeper Show. It's a super special edition. We've got Jose, Bruce, and Dan, and we're down here at the Hive Life Conference in Sevierville, Tennessee. And it's been one heck of a time, hasn't it, fellas? Oh, yeah. It's been a blast. A lot of fun. A lot of fun, man. What do you think, Dan? It's actually pretty fun for the first day getting to see everybody and catch up. It's, it's been great because we got to meet these folks online and you get to know them a little bit. Um, but to make that face-to-face connection, that, that's a huge, it's a big deal. It, it just takes it to a whole new kind of a level where, it, you know, you, it, you can be friends and, and have a, and feel like you know somebody uh, through all the ways that the, the channels, through social media and stuff. And to be sitting down with these guys that you respect, that you revere, that are good quality dudes, it's, it's, a, it's an honor and it's a blessing to be able to sit down and talk with you folks. Man, I appreciate that feel the same way connecting the faces and the names and then meeting new people people that you know that you see on your feed you know that's just man it's been incredible what do you think Bruce? yeah putting a name with a face it's been great uh, i already knew some of you guys online like you said but meeting you in person and a lot of people have come up to me that i have no idea who they are and they introduce themselves and it's just been a lot of fun it's been a blast and you know speakers have been great but I think I've had more fun meeting people almost than listening to the information. Yeah, no it's doubt. Been networking and just getting to know folks. It's been awesome. That that was the highlight of last year because it's not designed like a normal conference that I've ever been to, to where there's time allotted to network and hang out with people, and they kind of extended that again this year. And that's one of probably the best things I think we have about this. Came and made it a point last year. It, you, you could he he knew it then, and it, it it panned out with all the folks there. The little special moments in between the times where folks can make that handshake, that that face to face connection, share their story. You know, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. Here's the challenges that I have. What are you doing? What are you doing? You learn so much, and it takes things to a whole new level so quick. You just there's no other way to do that than like this, and it's so cool. Yeah, definitely. You know what I uh, was telling my wife that this what this conference brings. It's something unique, something different. I mean, I've gone to different conferences throughout California, but this is something different, very unique. And it's a large scale uh, event, in my opinion, to the things that I've already been to, like California State um, conventions, which are big and with a lot of research, a lot of stuff going on. But this is very unique. It is going to be exciting to see what that next step is going to look like next year what's going to bring and yeah it's going to open up a lot of doors for vendors for people to network right meeting new beekeepers and ways they do things and sharing experiences like you said in those breaks and uh, be able to share everybody's experience and learning from each other that's the funnest part i think Bruce, we got to walk around. You got to meet a bunch of people, connect the dots from the folks that you see, comment on your videos, and, and make that engagement uh, with you on, on YouTube uh, and, and your platforms there. What, what's it like when someone comes up to you and says, hey, this, or I love you, or I love your videos, I love what you're doing, I appreciate you? What's, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, it, it makes me feel really good. I, you know, I don't, I don't really feel like I'm the best beekeeper out there, but I'm doing the best I can, and people seem to realize that. You just learn that people are genuine and that they care. And um, when you're sometimes when you're doing the videos, you feel a little bit on an island, maybe so to speak. Like, is anyone really watching this? You see the views pop up on the feed, but you kind of wonder, you know, who are these people? And then you come here, and people randomly, just from all over the country, uh, just they know who you are, and they come up and they say hi to you. And it's been a blast, and just got to talk to some of them about their stories and what they're doing how many colonies they're running, and if they've even started yet. Just, it's just really neat, and I enjoy it. And to Jose's point, it is a very large-scale thing, but a uh, very large-scale convention, but it feel, has a small feel to it. Like, it's, it's personable. Sometimes you go to big events, and, like, nobody talks to each other. You don't know who anybody is, maybe your little group. But here, it's like you just feel like you know everybody. You know, you walk around, and some people may not come up and talk to you, but they're looking at you like, kind of like, I know that guy. And so it's kind of cool. And... um it's just a just a neat vibe. It's it's different than anything I've ever been to before. I think Everybody ever. here is like extremely approachable. Uh, no one's hiding, running away. Doesn't want to talk. They want to just engage. And it's uh it's an interesting thought to really, you know, with with how things have shaped up uh, in every aspect of life. Uh, a lot of folks are yearning for that face to face to make that human connection. And for a lot of folks, it's, it's been a little while to be able to get to something like this. And so there, there's a cool thing, a cool feeling, and a cool vibe going on where. There is a sense of community uh, with, with folks and everyone getting involved in doing this. And 
we all have a story on how we got here, uh, not only in life, but just, just the travel down to Sevierville, Tennessee. I mean, Dan, what was, your, what was the trek down here like for you? Uh, I worked a full day of my real job before this. Uh, my wife met me in Columbus at the office about 5 o'clock. Went to Lowe's and bought a whole bunch of sand for the bed of my truck because I heard the weather was pretty rough coming down. And we ended up showing up about uh, 6.45 in the morning. So we were on the road all night long. Pulled over a couple times for a little cat nap, but it's a six-hour drive that took 13. Tre- treacherous road conditions would be a gross understatement. Yeah. We, we had a, 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 a horrendous trip uh, coming in and out. But that's that's not what it was about. Because what was cool is every single every person here had that kind of trip coming in, literally risking life, limb, and property to get here. We're surrounded by folks that went that extra mile, literally, to get here, to be here. And when you're all in the same room, you know we've we've all uh, seen Bob Benny's video. We spent some time with him interviewing him. If I could put a word on what I'm seeing around here, it's tenacity. These folks are tenacious. They're not letting the weather, they're not letting the, the situations uh, surrounding our, um, our, our, all the things going around in our social and economical systems, that is not stopping these folks from showing up, from some, some supporting each other and building community, literally risking life and limb, stuck for 12, 13, 14 hours on the freeway, on ice. I mean, that, that is a special group of folks that will put themselves out there to dedicate the next few days to spending time with folks. That's, I have never been surrounded by so many people that are cut from the same cloth, that are the salt of the earth folks, and that is a special, special thing. There will never be another one like this. Um, I'm excited about next year, like you mentioned there, for, for vendors, for people, for networking. I mean, what a, what a great time to be involved in something that I feel like is catching steam, catching momentum, that, or the momentum and that we're at, at, a, at a tipping point where we're, we're taking something that it's been done for a certain way for so long and we're making some change. We actually are being the change that we want to see in this world by showing up and putting the time in. That, that's, a, that's a big deal. I would have hated to have missed it. I, I signed up early this time. I heard last year was really good, and so I went ahead and signed up soon after they announced it, and, and it was available. I jumped on it, man. I'm like, I got to go to this one. So it's just cool the people who have come to that, that maybe didn't think they could make it and were not sure they'd come, and then all of a sudden you're seeing people like Yappy B Man and just some different people, Mike Berry. I think he, I'm not sure how long he's planning on coming, but as the momentum is built, you've seen more and more people hey, I got to get to this thing. And I think it's going to just grow more and more as people find out about it that said, well, maybe that's not what I want to do. But next year, a lot more people, I think, are going to come and enjoy this this cool vibe that's here. For sure. I know it's, I know it's the first day and there's a lot where a lot of us are suffering through being just flat out exhausted and tired. <laughs> and here we are at the, the end of, the, of day one. Do you guys have any takeaways from day one and maybe what you're looking forward to on day two? The, the talks were great. Like, and I, I really enjoyed that. But once again, just it's almost like a family reunion type of a vibe here. It's just yeah. like, hey, I know you. I mean, people are just, everybody's meeting each other. I don't know if it'll be the same tomorrow, if it'll be more kind of, you know, digging down and just listening to the talks more because everybody's kind of met. I don't know if it's going to continue on to be more of this family vibe. It probably will be to some extent. But my guess is today, it's really ex- people were tired, like you said, but people were super excited. There'll be more of that tomorrow, I'm sure. But I think now people have kind of met each other. Maybe they'll maybe they'll focus more in on some of the talks and stuff. Although there were people that were in tune, you know, to the talks today as well. But I was just excited to see everybody. I listened to the talks, but I also was back there talking to people, and you know, I didn't hear all the talks. I kind of wished I would have heard some of the stuff I didn't hear. Yeah, I think that's the same same feeling that uh, Bruce has is uh, just meeting. That was the most exciting thing for me is just meeting uh, the people. Um, people that know my son and have watched my son. That's kind of that's special to me. That means, uh, you know, that, that's that's a lot because fa- to me, family is very important. So, uh, so to be able to share that and people watching, like Bruce was saying, it's like, I mean, is there who's watching? Oh man, you know, it's like, are we just doing this for the heck of it? Why are we doing this? Um, and this is a rewarding feeling to get. You know, I was telling my wife, like, yeah, people are watching us. 
like we aren't working for anything like people enjoy what we're doing what we're putting out um and they enjoy this family thing that we got going on and uh and just how we can spread that love for education and family and unity and in and bees you know bringing people together families that you know just oh I, my kid doesn't like the bees well get him a bee suit he'll 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 enjoy it so it's just things like that that they get from just watching maximus being out in the bee yard that it's pretty special for us to hear um that it's inspired them to buy their kid or grandkid a suit to to do the same thing yeah so that's pretty special for us I never thought about till Bruce said something about it, about being on the island of the, the content you create. I've never really thought that people actually download and listen to this or view it. And the running joke on here has always been the only person that listens to it's my mom. <laughs> I finally had someone come up today and say that your mom's not the only listener. But it really struck with me that it, it really does at times feel like you're on an island with doing all this. And you know, you, as a YouTuber, if you're trying to grow and get better, and like I'm trying to do, you get all caught up in the analytics. That's you, a good point. You get caught up in the how many viewers you have, how many subscribers you have, how many views per video. You know, why didn't this video do as well? Why, you know, I put so much work into this. Why is it getting way less views than the one that I just kind of threw up there? So I worry about that. I think we all probably wonder why aren't more people returning or why aren't, you know, more people watching these videos? But then you come to something like this and, you know, you just realize that people are watching and they're they're grateful. Even though I don't even feel like the videos are all that good sometimes, I realize other people do enjoy that content. And so it means a lot to me to, to see that. And I think that's one of the powerful things. Not only do I enjoy being able to meet these people, but they get to come and meet us. And so it's like this, like I said, this family atmosphere. I think the power of the Internet is huge because... Somebody came up to me from Spokane, Washington today. I mean, we sat next to lady. Jose sat next to me, and there was a lady there from Canada. Was familiar with his channel, and then she, after a while, she recognized me when he told her who I was, but she was excited about that to sit at the table. And we had set our stuff down there, like, early this morning, and she randomly had chosen that. And we came later and sat down, and she looked at Jose, and she was like, oh, my gosh, it's Jose. She was, like, starstruck there for a minute. So it was really neat to see that, and... It's just a relationship that we don't realize we really even have, and yeah. it is it's, it is like an island, honestly. Sometimes it is, yeah. And it's the nice thing about the group of people here, though, is everyone is super approachable. Everyone's extremely friendly, and it's probably one of the best groups of people I've been around in a while. I'll say one thing that's really cool, though, is being able to connect with all of you guys. Yeah, and it's not like connecting with i mean beekeepers i have a lot of beekeeper friends but you know uh on a commercial level it's tough to be able to relate and be open with the things that you share because i mean we all know we tr if we have something gold we don't like to share yeah yeah it, but i think that's one thing that's important with keeping bees is that it's okay to share information um you know i think it's pretty important you're not giving anything away because it's already a struggle. No matter, we could share right. all that information. It is still so hard to keep bees. But meeting all you guys, it is is being embraced with you know some love really. Um, that we're not competing. Yeah, right. we're, we are not yeah. competing. Uh, we're supporting absolutely. each other in in every and everyone, way. Everyone here seems to be here because they want to push beekeeping forward. Yeah. They do want to share their secrets and that's one of the unique things about this group is every I don't have a YouTube channel, but everyone here that does YouTube and content like this, they are doing it because they want people to learn it. They want them to be better. And being in a group like this to where actually the people producing the content want that other than other reasons it's really humbling for people like me that's on like the youtube side i'm on the outside looking in all the time yeah and it's you know. like i've i've watched you guys on youtube and i've never met you until today and it's actually kind of pretty cool to sit down with you guys this episode is brought to you by nature's image farm if you're interested in nukes packages queens or supplies visit us on the web at naturesimagefarm.com When we sat down and interviewed Bob Benny, it's, it's literally, it's almost been a year ago. It, it, there, there, there was something that he really said, and I've heard him say it since. That's huge. You know, here we are literally sitting 
all at the same table at this restaurant. You know, Bob says that there's there's plenty of room at the table, and we, we sometimes have a very it's it's okay to be competitive, and it, it, it's okay to see what someone's doing to challenge yourself to do better, to take your art or your craft or your work to the next level, 100%. A lot of us can fall into the pitfall where we're comparing ourselves to somebody else or what we do we don't think is good enough or no one's watching, there's no likes, we get that bad comment or we get a thumbs down. But when you come here, one of our recent interviews with, with Tim McCandless, you know, someone comes up and says, what you did there that really blessed me, that touched my heart, and that made a difference. And I have a similar story, and I just want to thank you for sharing that kind of a story because those things matter. It doesn't matter if it's your, uh, your, your, your commercial bee buddies or your sideline bee buddies or if it's the people all in your, your same bee club. There's plenty of room at the table. You know, we could have sat down at one table, and it could have just been me and Dan. Or we can slide a second table on, and we got Bruce and Jose. Or we can slide a third table, and a fourth table, and a fifth. There is plenty of room at the table, and I think if we go about that and do a better job of supporting each other, all kinds of mini-sized pieces, different shapes, it all makes one beautiful picture that wouldn't be there if we were all focused on the one little tiny thing. And I think that's what's awesome here about this conference. We have people that have no hives or just getting into it. We've got guys, you know, commercial beekeepers, queen rearers like like Jose, Bruce. You're all at a at a you're you're growing your bee yard. You're going to a, a whole new level. Dan and I were growing our bee yards. We're all doing different things. We can support each other, not only in that aspect, but also there's this weird thing with. YouTube content creators, because sometimes it's really easy just to see, well, this guy is doing that, he's getting these likes, and he's looking at all this kind of stuff. Like, if we just look at it, there's plenty of room at the table for everybody. We can support each other. That's the cool part. And and, and when you see someone that's that puts a killer video out or killer shorts, you know, I can't dance like Jose, but guess what? <laughs> Jose can. And that's the cool thing, right? That's right. And I think that's that's uh, it's an important thing. It's it's a it's a good reminder, I think, that there's there's always plenty of room at the table. And if you find yourself thinking otherwise, it might be time to check yourself before you wreck yourself because you can get in a bad, bad place. Well, I, I think when I talked to Cayman the first time, I think it was a year and a half, two years ago, that's one thing that he told me. Before he ever started thinking about doing these conferences, he talked about how he wants to blow through that, that competition, that you know, a lot of people, the old timers are not willing to share information. Some are, but many aren't. Many just are close to the vest. They don't want to share the secrets of their success. It's a competitive thing. And that's what they're trying to just blow blow through. And just, you know, why not let everyone have the chance to succeed? And so, you know, secrets and, and things that work for commercial people. You know, I tell people all the time, I'm like, look, I want to do, you know, I'm not doing it to provide food to, you know, put food on the table for my family. The commercial beekeepers are. Right. And so I want to do what the guys who are desperate to feed their families are doing because they have to keep their bees alive. I don't really have to, or hobbyist beekeepers don't really have to keep their bees alive, but they do to, to feed their family. And so, you know, Jose, you're an example of that. So you're going to do what it takes to feed your family. So if I can learn from you, Bob Benny, people like this, you know, even Cayman now, you got, I mean, you're pretty much going into this thing full-fledged feeding your family through it. So if I can learn from people like that, then I have a better chance of success than the person who's got a hive or two in their backyard and think they know everything about beekeeping because they've read some books or, you know, watched some videos or whatever. So it's just super important to me to, to be able to grab onto some of that knowledge from some of these guys that do it for a living and who have been successful year after year after year. Cayman talked about that today a little bit about we've, I've been as stubborn in how I've done things and I, I still am not as good as I could be. But I'm trying to get better. And I think that's the key is that everybody's doing that. And the only way to do that is to learn through experience. But like Cayman said today, you can learn a lot faster. You can grow a lot faster if you have people help teach you, if you can learn from their people that are experienced and successful. I want to take a minute and thank uh, of Cayman and Laurel Reynolds for taking this, literally for, 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 for bearing the cross of, of putting this kind of a thing on because it it's it's – easy to just buy your ticket and show up and come and be a part of it and all that but they have, have done a fantastic job of bringing people together at great expense time i mean all the resources that it takes for them to do this 
I just want to take a second and just say thanks to Cayman and Laurel and their entire crew for doing an outstanding job again to give us folks an opportunity to sit down at the same table, to break bread, have a cup of coffee, get to know each other. That, that, that's a big deal. It, it, it goes beyond just being better beekeepers. It helps us be our best version of ourselves. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of folks that 100% know who you guys are. But for folks who don't know who you guys are or your channel, tell them who you are, how to find you um, on your channels, and if you have any words of encouragement for folks who want to get started on a YouTube channel or share content, would you have any, any advice for them? Um, my name is Jose Uribe. I'm uh, owner of Uribe Honeybees, a, uh, a queen breeding company in Northern California, and we have a channel called The California Beekeeper. Go check us out. Um, you know, we, we try to share as much as we can, um, we are full swing, a B business and it's hard to keep up with the content, but we do our best and, uh, but yeah, you should check us out. And if you know, you ever want to just start a YouTube channel or just start creating content, the best advice I could give you is just do it, just do it. Cause someone's going to watch it and it's going to be that one subscriber, two subscribers, 20 subscribers, and you're going to get there. So you just got to do it. Well, my name is Bruce Jenny, and I live in southeast Alabama, a place called Dothan, Alabama. And my beekeeping journey started back in 2013. And uh, I just kind of was interested in it for years, and I decided to start a YouTube channel when I injured my finger, I think in 2014. And... Um, first videos were pretty bad I just kind of hit record you know just just was kind of uh, out of work and just kind of trying to find something to do during that time and I thought what the heck I'll try and shoot some videos I had no idea what I was doing and it started off and still is to some extent a vlog like a beekeeping vlog I'm not a commercial guy though I think sometimes I might want to be until I see the work involved and then I <laughs> second guess that a little bit but I've grown and I've learned both with the bees and with my YouTube channel and um, I'm trying to get better. Best version of myself, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Be the best version of myself. And so it, when it comes to beekeeping, I would say I recently did a video about with five things I wish I had known. And one of those, there were two things uh, that I would, out of those things. Number one is it can be addictive. Beekeeping can, right? It can be absolutely addictive. You also have to be committed, 100% committed. And that's not just in beekeeping, it's everything in life that you, that's worth doing. It's hard. It's going to be hard. You're going to have some failures. But uh, just, you know, there's a, a channel I watch. It's called Think Media, and they their motto kind of is just press record. It's kind of like you got to just jump in and start doing it. You can't expect to be at a high level. You can't expect to be Mr. Beast, you know, your first video. It's not going to happen. He went for years and years, I think, before he kind of figured it out in his success. Um, and this may not be the niche that grows like that like mark rober or mr beast but as you work at it you try to get a little better each video you try to improve your skills in beekeeping as well you do you, you grow and you learn and you just you change your direction a little bit and you just keep going and that's the key just start if you want to do it but you got to learn go go you can look on youtube and see how to how to sign up how to get started how to what it takes to get monetized you know how you can grow how to gain subscribers and just start implementing some of those things and see what happens. And you'll be surprised what it can do, what can happen. Just do it, just start, you know, take the, when you, there's something about, when you make the choice to do it and you put yourself out there, something happens. It's hard to put in words, but it's, it's a mental thing. It's in your heart, you're, you're, you're pushing that thing forward. And I think as we have, we have a small, small channel um, and it's easy to get caught up on subscribers and all those kind of things. But if we're only putting videos out for that, we need to maybe reevaluate before we even get started. You know, a lot of us, I think, felt uh, a tug in the heart. We felt led. We felt compelled to share something or a certain thing, and we put it out. And there's something to be said about that piece of art or that sharing that piece of thing. If it's a message um, about how beekeeping saved your life, um, how this is what we're doing to make these kind of things work, or here's just a killer dance that I can do because I'm Jose. <laughs> you put that thing out there and you just it's hard to explain you, you put it out you let it go it's it's just, it's a it's a way to ex ex express that thing and you let it go and then it's you don't get caught up on the thumbs ups the thumbs down the comments the metrics 
And there's a certain freedom in that because it just lets you work in that flow state to just be you, be your best self, and just create that 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 piece of work. And I think that's a it was it was hard for us as we got started to just let those things go, you know. And then I think you can it's just it's so much more enjoyable when you just take it like that, create something, put it out, let it go. Yeah. And it's a lot of fun though, actually getting together with friends and creating content. One of the funnest times I've had in recent <laughs> memory is dipping boxes with Greg and not deep frying my finger. We were pretty close a couple times there. Yes, and it, making that video was genuinely fun. It was it's one of the things that like you never realize until like you really start just sitting back and enjoying it. That was that was one video where we we took the approach to where we do not need to be the authoritative voice on wax dipping boxes. We do not need to be the guys that's nuts and bolts to say this is exactly how you do this and here's all the we're two, two buddies hanging out. We're dipping boxes. We have bad jokes. We just go with the flow. And the, the, the fun aspect of that was just one of those things where you, you don't have to try. Anyone who's put a camera in front of yourself, it's like, okay, take one, take three, take seven. I'm working too hard. I want to say this and it doesn't go. And it's like, forget about that. Let's roll. Let's go with it. And that's usually where the, where the gold is when you're not yeah. trying to do anything other than just what, what comes out. Yeah. That's one thing I like about Jose's videos, man. He's out there just doing fun, cool stuff, man. Fun. He's just he's having, having a good time. He, yeah, tells, he, the story, he tells the story really well. Like, uh, I mean, I've watched several of your videos, but I really enjoyed the one with the guy that came down from Wyoming. The the move the pollination hives in. It was a oh, pretty yeah. long video, but he came down from Wyoming and Jose, you're out there hopping in the truck with him on the forklift and just, I mean, and just just documenting what he's doing, just having a blast. You're talking to him in the truck as you're yeah. rolling down the road and just. It doesn't have to be scripted. I, there's some of my videos I try to kind of, if I'm trying to get a message across, I will work at it hard and do different takes. But you now when you're in the bees, it just happens. You can't, I mean, you can't, <laughs> yeah, you, you can't, can't say, okay, yeah. go back in there. Yeah. You can't say, okay, yeah. get back on the frame. Queen word. Bees, you know, get back on the top. Look, you can't, look you can't say take two. You can't do that. So you just, it's, it's pretty much, you know, it's just pretty much, it rolls as you're doing it and you just got to, just got to do that and so it's it's a lot of fun and i think one of my favorite videos of yours bruce is it was one of the more recent ones where off to the corner off to your shoulder you say hey this is where i first got started yeah, and you yeah. show the little corner where you fr now that yeah that was neat huh yeah uh, jose i think one of my favorite ones uh that i've seen with you is uh you and maximus are having lunch you're talking about all the things that you're doing you guys are at the at the mexican place and i i can't think of what the name of the dish was but it was some kind of a chip and, and tomato dip like that like that's it's it's cool when it's it's real life it's uncut it's you being you and nothing else like you just you cannot fake that type of genuineness you can't do it the first thing i ever saw with you was uh when the bear went through the mini nukes why do we have to talk about that <laughs> and, and, well, it, it was one of the ones because you can hear the pain in your voice oh, man. as you're getting out to that yard oh man and you can you can like i felt for you like that is awful and that was the first time and I, that right there i was like this dude's actually legit yeah i know you know i, I funny story about that is i was not going to record that i sat in my truck and i looked at it and i called my wife and i said I'm not recording today. She said, why not? I said, the bear hit us. She said, just record it. And, so and that's one of the nice and things, though, because everyone has the happy stories. Holy smokes, yeah. And it's it's the truth of what's behind it. And I'm surprised I things, didn't cry, though. I really, And that's I one of the really things that drew me to you, because <laughs> I, could, I could hear your emotion in your voice, and it was a really bad situation, but yet you're still sharing it with the world. Listen, Jose's got the cool factor like nobody I know. I mean, he is just... He's got the swag. He's got the it's cool. the whole thing. Oh, oh, man. The whole you package. Guys are... Toot, toot. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we need to get out of the restaurant here so they can right. close things up. But I, I really appreciate you guys taking some time to sit down with us and chat. Um, it's 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 the super cool thing when, you like we said, you take it from the online thing to the real face-to-face -face thing. Sitting at a table, having a cup of coffee, talking about bees at no matter what level, it's the same thing for all the folks here. Whether it's one hive or 1,000, we can always find common ground with the people that we surround ourselves with. And I think that's an important thing moving forward. It's not about 
how different we do all these things. It's the commonalities. It's the things that really bring us all together. If we spent more time focusing and engaging in those things, I think not only beaking, but we would all be better for it, I think. I agree. Well, I really appreciate you having, on, having me. And yeah, me too, man. Bruce, it was so awesome. It was fun. This, this it's fun, been a blast. Man. They want to find you. Where do we find you at? Bruce's Bees. At Bruce's Bees, all one word, on YouTube. The California Beekeeper on YouTube. Uh, we, we can find this uh, podcast on the Contrary Beekeeper Show, and we're also putting the podcast, the video feed, on our YouTube channel at Nature's Image Farm. You'll see a bunch of uh, videos with, with this fine guy deep frying his fingers and all kind of fun stuff. We really appreciate you guys sitting down. We appreciate everyone who's watching, spending some time with us. And as always, be the lighthouse. Believe. Be your best self. Be real. And be the change that you want to see in this world. We'll see you next time, guys. Recorded in front of a live studio audience. There you go. <laughs> That's cool. Ha, 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 ha.